What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. It's episode 640. We are presented by TickPick.com. Use that promo code capital OSHOW20 for $20 off your next order. Any sporting event, concert ticket, business seminars, right? We got the Super Bowl out here in Vegas next year. There's a lot of things that you can buy tickets for, and you can get $20 off by using that promo code capital OSHOW20 for $20 off. We have John Malott in the studio today. Scottsdale's own. Yes. CEO, <laughs> entrepreneur, uh, father, grandfather, we just found out. Yeah. Right? Does that make you feel old? Yeah, like five minutes ago, I just found out, man. Isn't Walked that crazy? In, man, it is crazy. I've been fighting this whole aging thing and granddaddy thing. <laughs> so, Age is just it, a number. It's just a number, 50 is the new 30. Wait a minute, but right? you said, did you say 640? 640 episodes. When did you start? Like at nine? I was 18, <laughs> 18 years old when I started, 23 now. So that's impressive. You just never, you know, it. it's yeah, repetition, yeah. it's discipline. Consistency. Consistency is the most important thing. Well, congratulations. That's that's powerful, bro. Well, again, nobody's telling me to stop except myself. So, you know, we're our worst enemies. Always. Exactly. It's St. Patty's Day, too. We got our green. We're both Irish. We're representing our people. So is Malat Irish? No, Malat is actually French. But that's what I thought. Yeah, I have Irish, uh, German, French and Irish are the three. The big three. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm O'Hara. I'm O'Hara. So I think I'm like 90 Irish, 10% Italian. Yeah. You, do you drink? A little bit. Yeah. Guinness. You have to. You don't have a Guinness. choice. <laughs> Guinness. Yellow jello yeah. shots on St. Patty's Day, right? <laughs> a little green. I have to do some green beer tonight, I think. This is, mm-hmm. this is the time. Yeah. I know you got your, your guys' event. We have, they're not on camera, but like all of your mentors are here. We got your wife's outside with a couple of other people. Yeah. We have three of them in here today. Uh, I roll deep, bro. Everywhere you, I go, you man. Literally brought like yeah. your whole pack yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah, we, we, yeah. This is when my When you entourage. texted me, how many people can I bring them? Like, there's going to be like a dozen people. <laughs> well, I heard there. when I heard it was a you know a studio where they also produce records and stuff, and I'm like, damn, I got to bring my entourage, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here everyone does. Yeah, if you're successful, you you have an entourage. If you don't well, have an entourage, yeah. Well, we have we have the best community on the planet. That that's you know that's what we're known for. Like we create we create this culture in this community, and it's it really is people first. And so, you know, we, we focus on people and then, you know, if you focus on people, people, more people come and then Mm -hmm. more people come and that's what's happening right Mm -hmm. now. The more you give, the more you get, the more fulfilling it it is at the end of the day, right? It really is, bro. Yeah. I sleep well at night, every night. Well, I'm excited for this conversation because like I told you when we first started, I am 23 years old. You're as successful as they come in this industry um, and what you've wanted to do. Like you're a guy who's able to do whatever he wants, whenever, you know, like obviously putting together these events you kind of mm-hmm. have to show up and, and coordinate yeah. but like you wanted to do this as opposed yeah. to working for someone else you know working for someone else's goals doing it on their dime yeah. clocking in clocking out every day not a lot of people like doing that these Man, days i'm unemployable <laughs> it's impossible yeah. no, no way i could do that mm-hmm. i mean you yeah. said it best like you you didn't have a college degree you didn't have like what the stereotypical person would tell you that you need to have in order to succeed yeah, I have, I have nothing that society says you're supposed to have to be successful, you know, the, and on top of that, you know, my first felony arrest, I was 15 years old. So on top of the, the lack of education, the lack of this and the lack of that, it was also a, a criminal record that doors kept getting slammed in my face. So where did you grow up? Milwaukee, Milwaukee. South Side. South Side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I grew up between West. Milwaukee and, and Chicago uh, most of my life. Okay. And how did you get into kind of that mischief? lifestyle well it was, i feel it like was, it finds you yeah well uh it was in my neighborhood man and, I, and i'm a high energy i'm a high energy kid uh, even today i'm a high energy kid so you know when you got a lot of energy and there's not a lot of outlets you know yeah. it trouble is usually you know <laughs> the the outcome so it was very early on man i was it, sixth grade i was smoking my mom's cigarettes in the alley you know? wow because my mom used to say don't smoke while she's smoking a cigarette in, in my face and so you know i'm now i'm stealing her cigarettes it, it was, uh, that was the beginning of it. And then by seventh grade, it was, you know, we were, we were selling speed and doing LSD and it was just, it was Man. a steady progression. And, uh, it, it all started out fun until, uh, 17, I had a heart attack from smoking cocaine. <sighs> Yeah. You're not supposed to have a heart attack that No, young. man, that means that means you did a little too much yeah. that night. <laughs> I, I eat I have I'm on like an all red meat diet. 
Yeah. And at my age, they're like, dude, you're going to have a heart attack. Nobody has a heart attack at your age, but you're going to have a heart attack. It's like heart attack at 17 years old. That's an eye opener. Bro, just tell them you're a secondary vegetarian because I'm the same way. I get all of my greens through animals that eat grass and shit. So you can be fine. <laughs> you're right. Wow. See, I'm telling you. You just opened my eyes yeah, to a whole man. new excuse yes. I can use. And plus, I got some product for you. You could just snap one of our packs and you're That's good right. to go. That's right. Oh, yeah, snap. Yeah. I know oh, your guys snap. in Scottsdale. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we got. A, I got a, a, a pack of greens. Eat all the steak you want, grab one of those packs, and you're good to go. Yeah. Live so how did you start Osnap then? Well, is it-, uh, it, it actually goes back. Now, the company's only uh, May 17th will be our second year anniversary. So we're still babies in this game. But the concept really started, uh, what, shoot, man, I'm over 50 years old. I can't believe it. it I was 40 years old, and I had a, health, I had a major health situation mm-hmm. that, that zapped me. I owned a nightclub, and I, I was just – I was going hard, man. I was – not eating right, um, Red Bulls, you know, Red Bulls in the day, Red Bull vodkas at night. And this yeah. was my lifestyle for a long time in that environment. And anyways, I got really, really sick to the point, like I couldn't get out of bed. And I, and I was making arrangements for my family. That's how sick I was. So I go to, through the traditional, what I call sick care system, because we don't have a healthcare system. And, you know, the doctor prescribes me a whole bunch of pharmaceuticals. I'm getting worse, which is now really bad. And I have a buddy who says, hey, man, go see a, a naturopath. I'm like, well, what? I don't even know what a naturopath is. Is it like a witch doctor? <laughs> you know, yeah. what, are we, what are we doing here? And that, was, that, ga- that changed the game. The, the, the naturopath, instead of expensive pharmaceuticals, put me on like vitamin D mm-hmm. and zinc, a whole bunch of herbs, watermelon, pumpkin seeds. It was like a quarter of the cost. And in 30 days, 45 days, I was a new man. And I was sold. I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. All right. There's it's some, fresh. It's... There's something to this, man. Mm-hmm. And, I've, and I've been on that mission forever mm-hmm. and uh, we got we got dr nick is here today he's you know some a lot of the people we hang with today they really understand that that game um and so when because i've been doing it i don't do anything unless i'm passionate about it. like i gotta live eat and breathe it like if i'm ta- telling you to snap one of our packs guaranteed i'm i'm snapping packs yeah and so because of that health issue is the reason why the company began. So it didn't start out of money. Like we're so, we got far ahead of the money. So money is not my motivator, the mission behind it. Mm-hmm. Like we're fucking our, excuse can, I can cuss. You can say whatever right. you want, man. Because I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you to do anything. <laughs> Just get the beeps out. But, we're uh, Irish. We are, me- I, we are angry say, people. And it, yeah. And it's St. It's Patrick's Day. Anyways, it was, uh, you know, really for me, it was like, I had to, I, I had to do something impactful like this the the second half of my life is about impact it's about purpose you know what i mean mm-hmm. I, I tell people all the time there's three stages the first stage is success like right now you're 23 man it, it's about success it's about how do you get to the next level and i and that's and it's a very selfish thing and it should be it has to be but the next stage which you're, you're heading into especially 640 episodes yeah is significance so if success is about you significance is about others and then for me the next stage is legacy. Yeah. Like this is where who's talking about you long after you're gone. Mm-hmm. And actually it circles back around because I think legacy now that I evaluate it, is probably just as selfish as when I'm in the success stage because my own ego is saying like, I'm not even going to be here. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about what my kids, kids are going to say about me right. when I'm long gone. So, and now yeah. that's a reality with a grandchild on the way, man, I, it's still just sinking in. Like five, literally when we were walking in this building and, and I found out my oldest daughter's having a baby and she just got married in uh, September. So this is a trip, man. Things happen yeah, yeah. quick. Yeah. I'm trying not to Things be emotional on busy. this shit. Like, I put my sunglasses on, you know what? Well, isn't that the quote you always <laughs> use too? Like a good man provides for his children's tr- children. Yeah. I have a tattoo like right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It was, um, and Lauren, my daughter, she's the reason for it because my, uh, my last felony arrest she was there as i was being let out of my home and and i always tell the story that when i was when i was being let out of the house we caught eyes just for a couple of seconds but it seemed like a long time but me sitting on the bullpen floor in the milwaukee county jail her face crying screaming and this quote that i heard when i was in a drug rehabilitation center a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children Mm. here i am this bum on the floor in jail and I can't even take care of the one kid I have. Yeah. So Lauren has been a part of all my stories, you know. How old was she when that happened? She was two, two-ish. I mean, that'll leave an imprint on your brain. Man. Yeah, bro. It it, it became, for me, you got to have reasons. The, the biggest thing I discovered is that I had a big-ass reason to get the hell out of that neighborhood, 
to stop living the way I was, to stop poisoning myself, my environment. And she was it. She was the the big reason why man, at that time. Man. You know? And that, how old were you then when you had her? I was 24. 20, so that was the last time at 24. That was my last felony arrest. I still had, you know, I, I, <laughs> I had some little issues here and there, but never anything major uh, from that point on. And I, I that was on that bullpen floor. It was July 4th, 1993, sitting there. I made the decision. And, and then, but you know, decisions, one thing, but then the discipline yeah. to follow through. I get people in my business all the time. They make the decision on Tuesday by Friday, they have a new decision or they don't have enough discipline to stay in the game or they get a little rejection or someone pinches them and they're fucking crying, mm -hmm. you know, like sissies and they're off doing something else. And they think somehow they're going to build a life around mm -hmm. that. I just, maybe I was just too, too stupid to quit or, or the options or the alternatives, you know, didn't look so great mm -hmm. to me. Especially in today's world, just for like a normal entrepreneur, like a kid my age would be like, I want to do this. And then like five days later, you're right. It's like, oh no, I'm doing this now. Like that, I that feel was... bad for you guys, man. You have so many distractions. Like we yeah. had distractions, but not like it is today. Everybody's throwing something at you. Everybody's trying to sell you something. Everyone's, you know, you, you're not going to find um, somebody that you really, really respect that it was doing they're like the, they're not the jack of all trades yeah i guarantee if you you know if you threw out some names would be like oh yeah they were successful here they crushed it here you know what i mean it's always that way but yet somehow we've bought into this idea that i can do 50 different things and and crush it and you can't mm -hmm. we're not even built for that we're, we're not physically wired that way yeah and, you, you can know. be mediocre at 50 different things man and most people are and it's great to experience yeah. when you're young like actually like go, go yeah. out and figure it out but yeah once you figure out what it is, stick to it and grow it over 20 years Man. and see what happens. Man, you're, yeah, you're wise beyond your years, bro. You should, I'm going to have you come talk to my people. <laughs> I'm still trying to <laughs> figure it out, they don't listen to me. Man. It's like, shit, come on, man. I mean, yeah. who, another guy, Casey uh, Adams, who you know, yeah, is a Casey part of our network as well. Another yeah. young kid, I'm like, man, like I think yeah. like sometimes I think like maybe people will tell me you're ahead of the game. And then I look yeah. at a guy, kid like Casey, I'm like, he's, he's ahead of the game, right? Bro, Casey, we hired him to be the CEO of our Build Your Empire brand when he was 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was ahead of, ahead of everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that back then i learned i learned a lot from casey um especially it was it was him who got me really on the social media tip where i was mm -hmm. like oh okay i can see where if if i if i double down on this and i get my brand right and i tighten all this shit up i can see and, and it's paid me millions mm -hmm. indirectly without i've never and it's funny i've never placed an ad a facebook ad done none of that just mm -hmm. all organic and, and it's made that's the way it's going to be at the end of the day if you know, God deems you to be a successful person anyways. Yeah. It's like, you're not going to look back and like, oh, I remember when I used to buy all my likes, buy all my views, mm -hmm. buy all my ads. It's <laughs> like, that's not how, like, it looks good, I guess, yeah. but nobody's actually seen it. it. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for you. It's that, it, I, it's the fake facade you could break with a rubber hammer. So we do it, we do it in our, in our actual lives and we do it even better on social media because so it's, well, be, between filters and pretending like you have this and that, but yeah. we've been, you know, people have been faking the funk for you know, forever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. It just, it's, it's, you it's, can easily read between those lines. Though. Yeah. You can see through it, man. And then, and a few questions you find out pretty quickly. Who's, who's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have yeah. people asking me, so like, how do you, you know, you know, get sponsorships and stuff. I'm like, you have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. You don't know this stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're they, asking the guy with 4,000 followers. Yeah, that they, doesn't add up. Yeah. They got a hundred followers. <laughs> but what do you say to young kids like that who see like a Casey Adams? Because I'm a young, hungry kid who wants to make the most out of my life now. We're like, yeah. you know, I've heard it from my parents. God bless them. I've heard it from other people. It's like, oh, you're like, I can't even begin to tell you where I was at when I was your age. Right. But it's like, you don't have to be 35 to become successful anymore. No, man. You got, Why do you think I'm in the game now? Because there has never been a better time from an entrepreneur. You guys got everything like. I was I was telling your guy running the booth over there, I can run my whole business from yep. this phone, and everything. I could be anywhere. Why find a dream, baby? So you can be twenty some years old, living the life, <laughs> and building a business. And you don't need you don't need to make millions. You know, I see I see twenty year olds. I, we got we got like when you look at my brand ambassadors over the year, I've had 600, 700 brand ambassadors that were making six and seven figures. Mm. If you're making six figures on a passive basis you can go just about anywhere you go hang out in bali tahiti i mean you go to the philippines yeah. you can go everywhere and live in hell of a life because you know these businesses allow you to do that now you're not mm -hmm. tied to a desk i appreciate like when we were doing these talks prior to covid 
I would, I'd have these like defending the millennials. Cause you know, everyone was saying the millennials are lazy. And I said, no, the millennials aren't lazy. The millennials are smart. They're not going to do what my dad did. Mm -hmm. Give his whole life to a steel mill. You know what I mean? Work 50 years to, for nothing, you know, and, and end up with health problems and everything else. They figured out, they watched these people. They, they were smart. It's like, look, there's other ways to do this shit. And, and you guys are about experiences and relationships. So mm -hmm. it, it, I'm like, I'm in the trenches with you, man. I, yeah. I love it. And it's like a double-edged sword because a lot of people are making their living based on not only their businesses, but the content that you put out. Cause that's where everybody's on. Everybody's on Instagram. Everybody's yeah. on TikTok. you know, yeah. like you have to have your stuff out there, but it's a double-edged sword because you, you said it best. Like you feel bad for our generation because some people will see kids their age making millions of dollars, or at least it yeah. seems that way on social media. And then immediately your Be confidence careful. is just depleted. Yeah, it is. A, yeah. You're sitting there like, why am I a loser? Cause I look at it too. Sometimes like, dang, I mean, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it can, it can work on the psyche. It can bring you down. And again, you have to, you have to all, you have to realize most of it's not real. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is, it's the highlight reel. And if you understand that part of it, that's why I don't, I don't scroll. I, I, I don't, because I get depressed mm -hmm. and I'm prone to that. So I'm like, I'm just going to put my shit out there, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. And, but yeah, we're, you guys, it used to be, I just, I just was listening to um, a radio show and it talked about in my generation, uh, we watch seven on average seven hours of tv a day think about that for a second so nothing's really changed it's just the on medium the phone, yeah. now it's on the phone now we're glued to these things and it's it's the same stuff you have to find a way to distract yourself from the distractions mm -hmm. and if you don't you're gonna wake up one day and be 50 years old be like damn coulda i have a tattoo on my leg says coulda shoulda woulda <laughs> famous last words man and don't end don't don't get to the end with regret mm-hmm because I see it like the generation before me, you know, the, the baby boomers, I'm Gen X, the baby boomers, there's so much regret in that because they, they were aggressive, but they were aggressively working for these big companies. Yeah. Aggressively trading their time for someone else's dollars. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, dang, I'm out. Of, I'm 50. I'm out of shape. My cholesterol's jacked up. Yeah. Just for a piece of the pie. <laughs> Man. When someone else is getting the 90%. 90%. Of so that's why I would be all, I was, when I was coming up and we were building, I was traveling from city to city. You know, my whole thing was to exodus out of jobs. Like I had this mission against <laughs> get out of these jobs. My dad got picked up from flight for life, you know, oh, yeah. uh, at, a, at a steel mill. And I saw firsthand what that company did to him, you know, intensive care for uh, a year. He rolled in a wheelchair. He laid flat on his stomach. I mean, on his, long, like a wheelchair about as long as this table. And he rolled it like this. And I watched this. And that company left and went, took all the jobs to Mexico, left him high and dry. And, you know, it was Man. devastating. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is a job, right? No matter how yep. much money you're making, you will be replaced the next day, and, no matter how was. long you're there. He was. And he was replaced quick. And, you know, 17 years of work before that happened. And it was like, all right, sorry. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it was, it was devastating. Fucked up our whole family. Ugh. And then for a lot of people watching and listening who have heard this story over and over and over again of like chasing your own goals, making your own money, obviously not as easy as it sounds, right? Getting out of that <laughs> rat race. Like that's the comfort zone, you know, working yeah. for someone else and getting a good paycheck or working yeah. for yourself. That's going to fulfill you at the end of the day. If you're able to get to that point where you're at, where you're able to do whatever you want. Yeah. Not everybody gets there. Some people find out they're not meant for the entrepreneurial space too, unfortunately. No. What were those early years like for you building those first couple of businesses, the failures, the oh. trials, the tribulations, and what kept you going at the end of the day? Bro, you see this tear welling up in yeah, my right? eye. I, I mean, I it's think tough. about the pain. I think about the laughter. I think about the ridicule, man. It was nonstop. Like, are you rich yet? I'm like, well, are you rich yet? You still in the damn cubicle. <laughs> like, yeah. at, least I'm at least I'm doing something. Right. Um, the, the jokes around Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it was it was brutal, man. It was brutal. As soon as you decide to do something different from the masses, they're gonna show up to throw rocks at you. Um, and and most people can't handle that. Uh, I was fortunate though. I had some incredible mentors, man. I had you know guys like Jim Rohn yeah. in my corner, Jeff Olson who wrote the Slight Edge, Darren Hardy, um, the Compound Effect. I mean, I had killers all around me, and they didn't accept. Like today, I have to accept our brand ambassadors whinging and whining and excuses and I, and I apologize to the old snap community i love you guys but you do whine a lot uh and i have to because i can't like i literally have people quit because i've scolded them 
and it wasn't even directed at them. It was something I put out, you know, and they thought it was directed at them. And I'm yeah. like, look, man, I was told one time, if you throw a rock in the crowd, whoever screams the loudest got hit. <laughs> so if you got hit, I, it wasn't even about you, but now that you mentioned it, maybe it was. People, people have, we lost this, this thick skin. You know what I mean? And, and that's a problem because I can't tell, I have to ask you like, uh, do you want the truth? <laughs> or do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Mm -hmm. And that's, and that, I struggle with that sometimes. Cause I'm like, damn, cause I already know what they, they want to hear what they want to hear and they're going to do whatever the hell they want. And when you're young and you're, and you're arrogant, um, because you're young and because you got time, you, I guess you can afford to be arrogant, but sooner or later you get humbled. Like everybody gets smacked. Everybody gets knocked down. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I wait for. I'm like, man, when you hit, so I, like I used, when I met my wife, my wife, I don't know if you know this, but my wife is is slightly younger than me. Um, I'm a little more, I'm a, she's more mature than me, but she's slightly younger in age. But when I met her, I said, I, I said, you might have to be, get beat up by the world first before you can appreciate a man like me. You, you follow me? Like, and, but what I found out after we were dating, we're hanging out, like, dang, she had been beat up yeah. already. Like, <laughs> she's already hit, taken some blows. So it worked out great because you need, you need to be knocked on your ass. Mm -hmm. um, I was with, I think it was Brad Lee, and we he did one of our events in in Paradise Valley in Arizona, and Brad Lee was talking to some young dude, super arrogant, and Brad Lee said, "You've never been punched in the mouth before, have you?" And of course, the kid was soft like you know soy milk, broken shambles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's like he said, "Never trust a man who's never been punched in the mouth either." And I thought, well, that's interesting because. And that goes back to you're gonna. Oh, they're spectacular. You 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 need you need to get beat <laughs> a little bit to yeah. to understand. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know the, the best lesson. Something my my all my lessons were hard. All my lessons were fail failure. Whether it was jail or you know all these these. It, I I was on a podcast two weeks ago and I said, look, everything came from crisis and and I went from one major disaster to the next and. What, I think the ancient script says that that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. And right now, like people, people are not willing, like they quit before, like everyone's quitting before it gets tough. And I'm like, man, you're, you're never, you can't run a company like that. You're, you're, you, you call, you call yourself a boss. You can go print a business card that says you're a boss, but you ain't a boss until, you know, <laughs> you've been knocked down until you can say, look, I've already been there. You know, I've already been where you're trying to go. I already got, I, don't go left because I already went left, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a bad street. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I see today people are like um, they're like travel agent leaders compared to tour guide leaders. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like yeah. they ain't never been there, but they show you the brochures and make it sound exactly. Pretty. But I want to be around the tour guide. That's like, man, I could tell you. You know, mm -hmm. here's where here's where we're going together. That's the other bad thing about you know young entrepreneurs today with social media. I think that uh, the best Mike Tyson quote of the past five years was like. Social media has created egos that people don't have in real life. And it also creates <laughs> yeah. egos that a haven't been punched in the face or aren't yeah. willing to get punched in the face, you know? Yeah, yeah man. It, it, it's there. Well, we've, we used to say it like there is no growth in a comfort zone and people trying to be comfortable and yeah, without, without that growth, they, if, if you're not growing, you're dying, you yeah. know, like Jim Rohn used to say, you know, when, when does a tree stop growing? Never. When, when does a tree stop living to its potential? Cre the tree just goes, just yeah. keeps growing and growing and growing. You know, animals, you know, we're the only species on the planet that can look to the sky, give the sky the middle finger, and we will still have a roof over our head. Mama will still put us in the basement. I got, I got, I have some of the brokest friends that I don't hang out with them as much. I limit my time. Right. Um, but they're, they're heavy set. Like they ain't missed a meal. Like you're broke. And you're a troll and you're, you're, you're a hater, but you can be, you can be here because someone's going to feed you. Someone's going to take care of you. We live in the richest country on the planet. I, when I was in the, I, I apologize for capitalizing the conversation, but you get me started. Oh, keep going, man. This is great. Uh, I, I was in the Dominican Republic and I'll never forget, man, when we pulled up to a stoplight and at the stoplight, I bought a new charger for my iPhone, a bag of cashews, and I got my windshield washed at the stoplight before the damn thing turned green. And of course, I, I gave the, the dude some cash. I remember when I got back to the U.S. and a dude was on the side of the road, young, young guy, holding a sign, give me money. 
no cashews, no, I, I mean, maybe the iPhone charger was the one that was stolen from me in the hotel. I don't know. But either way, my, my point was, it was somebody, they, like there, there's no programs. If you don't go and do something, you ain't eating. Here, it's different, man. You can get away with a whole lot and, and you're still, you're going to have a Netflix account. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it might be your friends, but <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? That's what everyone does. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think I got, I, I'm on uh, my sister-in-law's Disney account. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm on an account. I've never met the guy in person. I'm still waiting. <laughs> that, that, like seven years later, I still have not met the guy whose account yeah. I use. They're trying to, they're trying to crack down on that. I hear they're trying to make it so. Yeah. yeah but I that's so true though. Yeah. Like people, like I have friends who are just home living at their parents. It's like, they want like, they, you're never going to be motivated enough until you get knocked on your ass until it's yeah. do or die your backs against the wall. Like I have to make it or I'm not going to make it. Yeah, bro. I mean, that, that's it. Uh, beware of the man or woman who's just had enough too. you know, like oh, yeah. some, sometimes, and that's where I was. I, I just had enough of that life. That shit was hard, man. It, it was, it was taxing every day. And, and then again, you know, it wasn't so bad when I didn't have a child. So that was a big deal, like having having a reason, having someone that that was looking to me. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, it's like I, I wrote a book with a guy named Les Brown many years ago called The Power One. And, and Les used to say that, you know, once once that seed is planted in your mind, it can never go back to its original dimensions. And that's what happened. What happened in drug rehab for me was they showed me this other world. I knew one world. I didn't even know this other world existed. But once I saw it, it was very, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I'm like, damn, I could be something. I could be. And they were telling me I could be something. I, and then that was when I got turned on to uh, personal development, uh, how to win friends and influence people. That was a book given to me in drug rehab. Man, that shit messed me up. Like, I don't know how someone can find the information and know it's possible and then go back to living that way. That has to weigh on the psyche. That that's probably the reason why Prozac is the number one selling drug on the planet because we're we're working against um, our our nature. We're working against like if I if you got that potential inside of you and you're not living up to it, it's got to weigh on your psyche. It's got to yeah. make you feel depressed and angry and mad. You know what I mean? I feel like that's the ultimate rock bottom. Like it's one thing yeah. to get there without actually putting in the work to find the knowledge because it's all out there today, right? Yeah, yeah. Or like maybe back when you were 15, it wasn't, you know, it was more difficult to find. But I yeah, think that's Encyclopedia true. Britannica. You ever heard of those? Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, go it's to the library. The yeah. But like that's true rock bottom. It's like if you have the information and you know it's out there and you applied it and you're still going back, it's like, it's on you. 100%. It was always on you at the beginning, but yeah. now you know for a fact it's on you. And that's probably the yeah. worst feeling in the world. I have, a, I have a book that just came out today, this morning. As a matter of fact, and, and Paul J. Meyer, late, the late, great Paul J. Meyer, billionaire, incredible man. Paul used to say, take responsibility for everything. And back then I'd be like, for, well, I didn't do, well, yeah, I didn't do that. Right. He said, I'm telling you, take responsibility for everything and watch how your life changes. And, and we, we, it seems, and maybe it's just my, my, uh, perspective. It seems we're taking less and less responsibility. Like it's always pointing. It's always someone else. I mean, you see it in politics. Yeah. Our leaders are the best example. Republicans blame the Democrats. Democrats blame the, and it just, it never, it never ends. And there's no, no responsibility taken from leadership. So what do you think is going to happen? This shit is trickling down and with nobody taking responsibility, everyone's pointing the finger. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Your fault. And, and we're getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, and it's only getting worse. Yeah. I feel that way. Yeah. That's why you got to be, that's why, that's why you, you have to get on the other side of money, you know, move, move for me. I move with speed and urgency because I'm like, I, I think we all have this almost like impending doom. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Any other, I think that we all feel something is going to break. Something's going to give. Uh, I don't want to be in a situation if hopefully it never does. I pray it doesn't. And I pray, uh, literally pray on a regular basis. Um, but if it does, it's better to be prepared and you know and unfortunately when when bad shit happens people that can afford it the least are the biggest victims and that's never going to change mm -hmm. i didn't make the rules i, I jim rose say when you get your own planet then you can fix it up but right now this is someone else created the rules here so i figured out like let's get on the other side of money and then let's help as many people as we possibly can get on the other side of money so we are always like look if i got if i got it i give it Mm -hmm. And more important than the money, it's the information. 
what you do with the information that's on you at that point if yeah. i give you the information you still don't do shit with it mm -hmm. you know you deal with that that's where that starts yeah and i feel like and you will probably attest to this you made the most money by helping the most people oh make Look, money so i took a 600 hundred dollar check and i turned it into 30 million cash but then from there my team and, and it's not my team i hate you know it's the, the team that we built hundreds of millions of dollars were paid to them hundreds of millions before i ever saw a nickel it went through a filter system that other people got paid people i introduced i'm like look you're going to get the bigger piece yeah. i'm just going to be here direct guy maybe maybe if i can help with validation credibility whatever um but i always got i always got the like the book uh the leader eats last that's right that 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 was always our philosophy before that book was written you know we were like all right we're gonna eat last in my company um may 17th will be our second year anniversary i don't take any money i haven't taken a dime you know it's it's for me it's all i'm taking my wealth and pouring it into a company and then that income goes out to whoever chooses to play the game and whoever chooses to go do something with it they get the money that we invested into the deal and i love it man and i, yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way and you know so but i'm always like man I, I i see i see what people are capable of and then when 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 they're not living to what they're capable of it does drive me nuts mm -hmm. it's hard for me not to say like jenny from the block is in here right now not not j-lo jenny right. but close enough she does have that that look um but i tell her i said like you you could crush this how many times i mean i'm constantly greg is in here greg finney my brother it's constantly like you got this man you but you gotta go through the fucking pit to get to the palace there is no shortcut and don't let social media and don't let these 23 year olds that you know took a picture in front of their buddies rolls royce yeah you know let you lead you to believe that this is going to happen faster um it, it won't it doesn't what's your disciplinary style then well talk about you know yeah. people <laughs> breaking under the pressure at the first time you yell, you yell at them yeah well look I, here's what i learned from having kids um i used to be a jerk I used to be really just like, I had I one. That's what a lot of fathers would say. Yeah, I had one, I had one stop. But then, you know, it's funny because my daughter Carissa is here right now. So Carissa, when, when my kids were coming up, like when I would punish them, my oldest daughter, who's, a, who's now making me a granddaddy, um, if I told her to go to her room for the day, she'd be happy. She'd be like, thank God I'm away from these people. <laughs> and she'd be in her room by herself, loved it. If I told Carissa to go to the room, that was a real punishment. Like she's like me, man, wants to be in the mix. So I, I learned from them. I learned how to be a better leader from leading family and how I led my kids. Cause I, you can't talk to everybody the exact same way. And just like in our business, you know, we, we categorize people like by colors, blues, reds, uh, sharks, whales. Um, and just for, for reference, like a shark would be in our, like someone who's money, money, money motivated. Well, if I'm talking to someone who's a tree hugger and is worried, you know, is about the environment and singing Kumbaya in Birkenstocks <laughs> every week, I can't be telling them about, we can get you a Rolex because yeah. it's going to turn them off. So I learned that I have to deal with, with people differently, but I still have, you know, I, I, I do every now and then get on our Zooms and, and let loose. <laughs> for a high energy guy it comes out yeah because my energy man i get i can work myself into a frenzy like get me on a stage or get me you know i'm, I'm easily excited uh part of the reason i have four kids but i uh i can get i can work myself into a frenzy you know pretty quickly and some and i just roll i mean this is this is what you get but mm -hmm. if i'm dealing i've learned too is, is to deal with people um where they're at you want if i'm if i'm dealing with you one-on-one -on -one, i've already i already i'm already asking you questions so i know who you are Leaders that don't know who their people are, um, you know, one, one day they won't have people. Mm, that's a good quote. <laughs> yeah, like, put that one down. John Malott, someone remember that because I'll Mentors, forget. Mentors, <laughs> write this down. <laughs> All right, good, good. Because, yeah, I forget shit I'd be saying. Uh, but you talk about, you know, breaking bad habits, getting into good habits. Talk about like, oh, snap, like yeah. nutrition, right? Yeah. Health is wealth at the end of the day, right? That's like the number one <laughs> wow. thing. But like, how do you navigate getting out of bad habits and becoming obsessed with good habits. I think that's the hardest thing. Yeah. Like you, you, you can feel really good by doing like getting a workout in. If you don't work out, it's like, oh, I feel great. But then yeah. you just go right back to what you're used to doing because you're used to those bad habits. How do you become obsessed and fall in love with those good habits? You know, it's, 
I, I, I am obsessed with it, partly because I wake up in the morning and I'm, I'm energetic. I feel good. And talk to anybody. Like, I'm a great example. When I lost my health, I would have given you everything I had to get it back. I was willing to pay whatever to whoever to get it back. And it's so interesting to me that for, so, for, for most of us in the West, like something bad has to happen. Like we have yeah. to have a heart attack. Like Jim Rohn say, look, if you, if you have a heart attack and you survive, you're more likely to go on to live a longer life. But it took the damn heart attack to wake you up. It took the heart attack to get you to change your ways. So I started thinking about this and I was on that track, man, because I was young and whatever, could eat anything. And I said, no, that's not going to, that's not going to be me. I'm going to, I'm going to do this with intention and with passion. And, and then like in our business, Old Snap has really become, I tell it, look, we're, we're going on our second year. We're more about edu it's educating the marketplace. Number one, we first have to get people to retrain their taste buds because McDonald's has a laboratory more impressive than the Mayo Clinic cancer laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> and what are they doing? They're creating stuff that we're going to buy that's going to get the taste bud to want more. I, I drive past the McDonald's sometimes and I can taste the French fries. You know, it, my mouth starts watering just sometimes thinking about it. Starbucks is a, it's an experiment in how little coffee you can actually put in a cup of coffee because they have 20 some chem chemicals in there that are not, it's not coffee, but it's a way to make a company very, very profitable. And so we've, we give a, give a five-year-old a piece of broccoli without cheese and salt and everything else. And what, that kid will throw it at you, <laughs> yeah. will not eat it. Like I, we're on a, we're on a, a, all the challenges in society. I think our biggest challenge is our health challenge. Just look at the, the numbers don't lie. We got more obese kids than ever before, more childhood diabetes than ever before. It, 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 it's, it's scary. These kids are weaker. Testosterone, you know, ki boys in their 20s, that testosterone is less than, you know, guys that were in their 60s 20, 30 years ago. Something is up. That's why I tell these little punks on on <laughs> trolling me on, on Instagram, be careful, bro. Don't let me catch you in the street with your low testosterone soy-based self. <laughs> Do you think that comes from like social media and other things that you guys didn't have when you were yeah, yeah, 20, think, 25 years old? I think so. I think comfort. I think speed. I think it's cheap. You know, I get off the dollar menu every day where yeah. going to Whole Foods, you know, <laughs> to, 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 to eat healthy. And then, you know, and we, we've become a society that now in all areas where we, we all, we shun the natural and we embrace the unnatural. I mean, go to Florida, go, go to the, where they're getting the BBLs and everything else. I'm not, I'm not, I, I think it's all great, but there's, this is, we take the shortcut on everything. We're finding shortcuts in everything and technology's speeding all this stuff up and it's making it so we don't really have to, we have to really do shit. I know it's scary. AI yeah. with everything too. Dude, just, yeah. The meta, the metaverse where people talk like, Bro, you already don't get off the couch. Imagine if you're in your virtual reality and you're pimping hoes in the virtual reality and you're a like big dog and you got money in the, and it's like, man, it could be 300 pounds. <laughs> That's, I mean, to me, working out makes you feel good. If you have yeah, a yeah. goal, like I grew up watching pro wrestling. So there was like all oh, the yeah, others yeah. like Dwayne and Cena yes. and Triple, yeah. like all, all those guys. I'm like, I want to look like that. You know, like Hell I was, yeah. I was like 120 pounds when I graduated high school. I'm like yeah. about a buck seventy now. Hopefully, I look like you yeah. a year from now with you know my all red meat diet. But like, I feel like yeah. looking good, like looking good, you feel good, you're more confident, you're the real version of you. Yeah, and I'm, there's a lot of people out there that have not found the real versions of themselves yet. They haven't. They haven't. You know, like Greg Finney's in here today. He was a, a arm wrestling champion. He, like he's got a YouTube video where his arm actually snaps in a. Oh no! Really? <laughs> snaps, oh my god! Like <laughs> crazy shit, but. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But it, you know, it's, it's anyways, there's, <laughs> we could go, we could really go down this, this, this hole in a big way. I, I just really am committed to living my best life. And in, in, in my fifties, I feel better now than I did when I was in my thirties. And Dr. Jen Milks, who was going to join us at our event this weekend here in Las Vegas, and she's a powerhouse. Like she, she was constantly saying to me, she says, aging is a disease. And you know what happens? We start accepting things. We start accepting, oh, I'm 35 and I'm getting old. And we say it and we repeat this stuff. Oh, my, uh, like my joint, I don't have joint issues. I don't have arthritis. I don't have none of that stuff. Um, I don't accept any of it. 
and again, I don't know if that's me just being arrogant or what, but I believe we we attract more of what we want. And then what happens is people have this thing when you hit a certain age, you're supposed to slow down. I don't agree with that. I, I, I think it should be different. I think you shouldn't go to the clubs when you're in your twenties. I think you should be going. I think the club should be jam packed with 50, 60, and 70 year olds. The people that have the money to pay yeah, for yeah. everything. Cause healthy. now we, we can pop bottles. We can get and You know what I mean? It, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I think we should be picking up the pace because as soon as you slow down, it's like, how does rust happen to your car? Let that car sit there for a while. Mm-hmm. How do you end up with a blankie and a rocking chair drooling on yourself? Because you became lethargic because society told you you're getting old. And then the see the pharmaceutical companies, man, we got, man, the, the amount of prescription drugs that these, that young people are taking where you go, you're 30 years old and you're on four different prescription drugs. Come on now. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not on a high. I'm just like, I, 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 this is a big deal to me. And, and I have, I have four daughters. I want to be around, man. I want to, and now I'm, now I'm about to be a grandfather, which I don't yeah. know what that, I don't know what that's going to do to me <laughs> psychologically, but I think I'm going to speed up even more. So, so that my grandbaby is like, my granddaddy is going to be, could beat up your dad. <laughs> that's the way i think but anyways you get my point oh my, that's the one percent of you know 70 year olds out there like when she when yeah. the child's 18 your granddaughter grandson whatever yeah. you're gonna be like vince mcmahon you're gonna be like the most jacked 75 year old guy in the i universe. received that bro i just took all that in right now um, mm-hmm. i i receive it and that's where i want to be and and you and you have you have to be intentional about it you can't i i think i used to just i used to think things were just going to happen for me and I never, I never ever thought about blaming my philosophies for all the challenges I was having in my life early on. Um, and it wasn't until I had great mentors come in my life that I started checking it. Oh shit. It's, it's my philosophy that I need to check. It's, it's not the wind. It's the setting of the sails and my sails were not set well. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, the associations, everything around, everything about me would have suggested back then that I was heading like, you know, I lost my sister to a heroin overdose when she was 21 years old. My brother's, you know, been in and out of jails, is, is, suffers tremendously from addiction. Uh, he's two years younger than me. If you've seen him, you'd be like, dang, he, you know, he looks 20 years older. Um, it's decisions, man. People coming from the same house, but don't look the same. Philosophically are not on the same page. Mm-hmm. And my experiences, which happen to be very early on, ch- trouble with the law, the things we talked about earlier, that actually became the damn blessing. I, you know, you don't realize it when you're going through it. And it's like someone said, if you're, if you're going through the pit, keep going. What happens is people get in the pit and they stay there and they wallow in it. And right. And we also live in a society that it's cool to be a victim. Like you get a lot of attention. If I was on here saying, Oh, everybody go oh, pray for me. And you know, I got this and that, and you know, I got a GoFundMe account and I'm just, woe is me. And you know, people be like, poor John, they'll, pray, they'll, they'll send me prayer chain. Let, you know, it, and it, it's a lot of attention comes from being a victim today and we keep doing it. And again, I like there's people are really victims in, in deserve that. But once you get a taste of that, if you've never had it, um, we watch people go from one victimization to the next, mm-hmm. to the next, to the next. And, um, yeah. Just know. like basic traumas become like victim mentality too. It's like, yeah. leave it for the true victims to get help. Yeah. Let, you know? yeah, let them have it, man. And let, let it, we should be helping like the real victims of our society. The, the, the people that really can't, can't, you know, fend for themselves. And we, we're wasting so much time with people that are false flagging yeah. victimhood. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And it's a, it's a little bit annoying, but I see why they do it. You know, it's like this. Have, have you ever, you've dated, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Have you ever had someone break up with you? Nope. Oh, see? Never been in a relationship. I will clarify okay, that. Okay, all right. Which is why I'm here doing this, talking I, to yeah, John a lot see, right yeah, you're, you're, you're a hustler. I didn't get distracted. You're, man, bro, I, I was going to say that the smartest thing you can do. But let me tell you something. Now, there are, there are people out there that if you've ever been in a relationship and let's say she breaks up with you, let me tell you what happens immediately. All of your buddies start calling you. She was a whatever right, anyways, right, right. F her, let's go to the strip club. <laughs> your mom is now setting you up. They're having cookouts at the house for you. Like be, because that relationship failed, everybody's on you. Attention is everywhere. Yep. You know what I mean? It's If you have a successful relationship, it's just the opposite. The world's trying to break it apart. I'm telling you, I have a successful relationship 
and I see the stuff that's thrown at us on a regular basis. It's completely different. If I had a failed relationship, I'd have people want to hang out, take me out. I mean, it just it, it's it's an interesting play, and uh, you got to be careful up for it because it'll suck you in. You can't win either or. It, no. It's like that old cheesy quote, like "choose your hard." It's like <laughs> yes. being married, it's hard. Being divorced is hard. Choose yeah. your hard. Being fat's hard. Being in shape's hard. Choose your hard. You like know, people that. are going to come at you one way or another. No matter they're, what, they're going to feel bad for you or they're going to be envious of you. It, it's true. So you, yeah, you got to make you got to make the decision. What am I going to do? What 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 do I want to become? You know, and for me, that was that was the big question. Was I'm constantly taking inventory, like, who the hell am I? And how do I want the world to see me? How do I want my kids' kids to see me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I'll tell you one other thing that I think I think young people struggle with um, because of social media. It the the day that I stopped caring what other people thought about me, that was the day I became a free man. I was never I was never free. Uh, Self esteem issue. I can go on and on, man. I, I was not free for a long, a big portion of my life. Mm. And then it was Jeff Olson one time said, he said, bro, why do you care so much what these people think? He said, do you know, if you died, half the people at your funeral wouldn't even cry. And he said, if, if it rained on the day you died, the people, ha you would lose the other half that were, they would, they would even make it from the funeral home to the burial if it rained. <laughs> and, and you're worried about what these people think about you. And I, I, you know, when you start putting it in perspective, it's like, man, what are they going to do? I tell my wife all the time, these people, they're not going to pay your bills. They're not, they, they don't give a shit what happens in our house. Don't worry about that. We're going to, we're going to do what we do. And that's why, you know, sometimes, you know, I, for whatever weird reason, you know, we're controversial and I'm like, the only reason why anyone's here, because we just do what the fuck we want to do mm -hmm. and not, and, but we never hurt anybody. You'll never find someone that says we owe money, you know, where, you know what I mean? It's like. We don't con anybody. It's like, this is what it is. This is what we do. It's all on the table. Get it or don't. You're being who John Mallott was supposed to supposed be at the end of the be. day. And I, and I wasn't, and I wasn't for a long time mm -hmm. and I was miserable because of it. And you went through that miserable huh. atmosphere and that miserable time because you finally got to that breaking point, right? Like I was, yeah. you needed that in order to become the version. It had to happen. Today. It, it goes back to the heart attack. Have the heart attack. Then you make the changes. I had all of these disasters that happened yeah, and, and all of them in one form or another forced me to make changes. But I'm telling, I warn people, man, this stuff, it's moving fast. Time is moving fast. Um, I, you know, it's like there's, there's two pains in life, mm -hmm. the, the pain of discipline and, and the pain of regret. And you get to pick, you get to pick which one, mm -hmm. but 90% of the population will go to their grave with their music still in them. Books never written, businesses never started, dreams never fulfilled. And it, and it's sad, lives of, of true, quiet desperation. But on that topic of yeah. like that tattoo, coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like once you get to that age, despite how much you've done, you're still going to be like, man, I wish I had done that. I wish, yeah, you know, yeah. there's probably going to be a lot of things that <laughs> of you just course. never got around to because you were so busy. Yeah, man, there's so much to do. It, there's just so much to do. There's so much to do, so much to see, so much to experience that, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to have some of that, but I could tell you if I, if I went tomorrow, um, I, I lived, man, I've, I've done, mm -hmm. I've done some things, bro. I, I mean, I, I lived this life and, and I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to extract and squeeze out more of this life mm -hmm. before I go. And, and, and like your big why was having a heart attack at age 17, like life threatening yeah, thing yeah. happening to you where like some people yeah. are going to go through things where it's just like, oh, I had an ounce of discomfort and they're going to turn their lives around. Well, other people are going to get to rock bottom and determine like, what am I doing? Yeah. That is interesting because you're right. It, it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. There are some people that, that haven't even, that never had issues and somehow have figured out a way, like I'm, I'm going to go smash it. I'm going to go crush it. And they just figure out. It's wired different. Yeah. They're wired different. I wasn't wired that way. It, it, it took some, some major challenges for me to dig deep. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I just thank God, you know, when, and the other part of it is I have four daughters too. So that, that really became a big driver for me. And I didn't want my girls, um, growing up in that neighborhood that I grew up in. It, it was destructive enough for if you're a boy, but, but girls were constantly victims in, in all kinds of ways in that neighborhood. And, and that really, it, it really sat, it sat heavy with me. Like, Dang, man, the music we listen to, the the stuff that we talk about, it, it was all degrading 
to 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 girls to women. Well, they weren't; they were girls when I was growing up. But you get my point, right? It just wasn't a place where once I have a child, I'm like, shit, I got, I now I ha- like I'm I'm cool in the alley here. I'm cool running around these streets, but I got a daughter, and that that infected me. You know, what I mean, it was like every day, like shit. Every time I messed up, I'm like, oh, no, man, I I'm I gotta I gotta make some changes. I gotta make some changes quick because we got to get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. Can't be here because at 15, you know, was my first felony. So I, I've had these redefining moments, and so 15, I'm locked in a juvenile de- detention center. I get out, and then right away, 17, I end up, you know, because that that's when the crack, what we call the crack epidemic. Now we were we didn't even call it crack. We were free basing cocaine. Um, and then now, you know, it, it became the crack epidemic mm-hmm. and it was just from that one to that thing to that thing. And then July 4th, 1993 was, was for me, it was the final straw. Like, okay, man, <laughs> this is, too, you, you ever drink too much and you're like over the toilet, like, God, if you just let me yeah. out of this, I'll never, I'll never drink do it again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was me sitting on that bullpen floor, just talking to God, man, four days stuck uh, going nowhere and very concerned about, you know. Uh, the legal ramification what was about to happen man do you think yeah. you could live in milwaukee today? hell no no hell no obviously just from like everything no. else you've experienced now you live in scottsdale like you yeah. can't even compare no however funny. from a mental standpoint though like it's a it's a it's a cesspool um not now i'm not saying the whole place yeah but unfortunately if i'm back in that environment i'm i'm gonna get sucked yeah. back in and I, it's funny because i commented like you know, Milwaukee has some challenges. It, it, they rank highest in per capita mur- murder. I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, HIV. It just goes on and on and on. There's a mentality issue in that city. There's a there's an Instagram page four one four hype house or something like that. And it you know it's not all nonstop just showing them grand theft auto type ch- police chases all throughout the city. Just every single day this is happening. And I just commented on something two days ago. Like I said, my city shake my head with the emoji and people are here like um i wouldn't even say like there's such you can just see the mentality in the comments yeah. and like saying like one dude said um you're a 50 year old influencer i'm like bro you're a 20 year old fat troll <laughs> you know i shouldn't be doing it but i, I, right. I had a little like, extra pick time your poison like yeah. why, why are you coming after him it's like come on and it's just it's one negative comment after another and i'm like this is the mentality that's why i couldn't go back i have people I got a friend of mine is a, a police officer. He's a friend of mine now. I was at a club with uh, Anthony Pettis, the former USC right. lightweight, good friend of mine. Um, and we were hanging out partying and they all leave and I stay in the club for a little while hanging out. And when I'm walking out of the club, a cop grabs me immediately. Like I'm, I hit the door, a cop grabs me, says, come with me. Come. I'm like, I'm like, what did I do? I'm th- am I being arrested for something? He said, no, I'm saving your life. So they, they heard through the radio, through some something else happened that there were there were people planning to kill me that night and rob me, and 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 thank God to uh, my buddy Ehrlich, MPD bro, I love you, motorcycle cop, and that night he had a, a squad car and he he put me in the back, drove me to my hotel, and I was always in that environment though, so even though I was changing my life, I still I still had one foot in the hood because I was trying to bring out my friends right. And what's interesting, I've been for 20 some years going back into Milwaukee, going back into Chicago and where I, where I grew up and trying to say, look, if I did it, if, 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 an, if one man could do it, another man could do it. You with me? And for 20 some years, I've been trying to get him out. And I said, I got away, bro. I did it with all the background, without the, no high school diploma, all the things you, that we all have. And 20 some years later, I can go back to those same neighborhoods and the friends I grew up with, the ones that are still alive or not in jail, are doing the exact same shit. 50 years old. I, my brother, 40, no, he's now he's 50 years old. Just just involved in a murder trial. I said, bro, you're, and he's blaming someone. I'm like, bro, you're, if you're out at four o'clock in the morning on, on uh, Caesar Boulevard. We know what happens. And this yeah. is why. And you know, take responsibility. Yeah, your yeah. actions led you into that situation at yeah, the end bro. of the day. That's crazy though that yeah. if that if your buddy wasn't there that one night, everything yeah. could have been different. And he wasn't my buddy then, but a man saves your life. And I and like he knows I always got his back. If he called me and said I need help with the mortgage, um, I got him. So like yeah. he like knew the plan, like he knew what was going down. Well, the police somehow, somehow, somebody, you know, got it and they they got wind of it. And th- this club wasn't this was a club I probably shouldn't have been in anyways. Yeah. But uh 
I'm, I was the only, you know, whatever. I, I was the only one that looked the way I looked. Man. And it's like. And I was, stood out. <sighs> but people knew me. See, the challenge is, it's just like Anthony Pettis. Anthony has had his car start on fire there. He continues to go back to give back. Mm -hmm. And yet you don't always get the respect you should get. You're going back to help people and you're contributing to the community. And then there's always this group of haters, man, that, and that's why, that's why, like, it's not even, it's, it's not even safe for me to be there because once they know you have something, they want what you have. Yeah. Like I'm saying, I, I was going back all the time and saying, you can have what I have. I'll show you exactly how to, I'll give you a free game. I'll show you exactly step by step by step, but that's not how they want it. They'd rather, you know, take the gold chain, you know, or the Rolex. Cause I, you know, I got robbed at gunpoint for a Rolex, you know, in Milwaukee. Oh. And if you get to a point like, all right, all right, man, I don't need to be in this environment. And so you want, and so no wonder why when people say, oh, you sold out, you know, I didn't sell out. I, I had no choice, <laughs> you know, to stay alive, to, to be out of that environment. Cause once they know you have something, they're trying to get yeah. it. And they don't have the knowledge to know how to, and they don't even want to have the They knowledge. don't want to, bro. Like right? I go there and do seminars and, and invite them. And, and I know, like, I, I know who should be in that room and they're not there. It's like I say all the time, I, I do a Zoom on Tuesday nights with our old snap community. Um, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm saying to myself, the people who are on here, they're the ones, they're always on here. The people that need to hear the stuff, they're not on here and they're not going to get on here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. It, it's mm -hmm. like, what, what, what is it? You can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink. That's right. And I feel I, like yeah. that's more of, I mean, this is everywhere, but I feel like it's more of a Midwest East coast thing. I grew up in Jersey, like right mm. outside Manhattan and oh, I'll yeah. go back from time to time and people will be like, Hey, can you give me a so-and-so's number? Like if I interview an athlete, can I have his number for what? Like <laughs> yes. you can get into what I'm doing and, you know, have conversations yeah. with people like this. Build if the you relationship. I, I could definitely introduce you to someone. It's like, Oh, I just want his number for what? Like no knowledge. They just want it. It's funny right now because I just posted a thing when I was at uh, Team Ten, Jake Paul's house, yeah. hanging out with Jake Paul. So I just posted something on there, and this dude is blowing me up, bro. Can you get me his number? Can, I don't even know. Number one, I don't even know you. Number two, I'm, I'm like, no, man, that's not how it works. Was it just a random DM? It's it, well, it's a guy who, and I, I shouldn't even say, but he he sells um, private jet stuff. Okay, I don't know the dude. I met him at an event one time. We high fived or whatever. But he's on me every time he sees me around. I'm like, that's not how it works, man. I don't even know you. <laughs> and it's like you build the relationships. Do what I did. This is 29 years in the trenches building the relationships. And you know, I, I do give people in my circle proximity's power. So if, if if people in my circle get access, Greg Finney can tell you, like some of the people that he's had access to, he wouldn't have had access to had he not. He had to show up though. He also. He paid for his flight. To, like we had a lot of people. I said, come out. We got this big ass event. You're going to meet, you know, uh, who are some of the people? Brad Lee, Ed Milet, Robert Kiyosaki. It just goes on and on. These are people in my circle. But he, a lot of people in my circle were invited. Yeah. But he bought a plane ticket. He paid for a hotel room. He actually showed, John Wooden, I think, said, said the best. He said 90% of success is just showing up. Mm-hmm. He showed up. Now he's now he has he's not only did he have access, but he's smart enough to figure out how to build relationships. You know what I mean? So people yeah. want the shortcut and mm -hmm. the shortcut is not going to do it. No, it's just not. But that's so true, though. All you got to do is show up. Show One up. person invites you somewhere and then all of a sudden, like, if you know how to work it, dude, like if you're <laughs> getting invited, first and foremost, you should know how to work it because that person that invited you assumes that you yeah. know how to work it. Yeah. I work, yeah. Like, again, you know, because like bringing Greg backstage is different. I knew he's, he was going to handle himself properly. There's some, some people I would have, you know, I, they could have came, but I probably wouldn't have brought him in, in right, certain right. areas. Um, but yeah, even this weekend we have this weekend, we have um, uh, a mastermind that's happening and there's nobody on that stage that that's doing less than a few million dollars a month. And, uh, but yet I have a lot of, I have people, friends here that won't walk across the street to get the information, but they'll hit me up for money. <laughs> you know I mean, uh, it's it's very interesting to me. Do you do you think that's lazy, or do you think that's just lack of education? You know, I, I don't. I used to think it was lazy, but but they're not lazy. That they'll be at Dre's after dark at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that takes some energy to do. That takes some uh, figuring out how to maneuver to get in there and and be at a table popping bottles. So I, I don't know, I man. I, 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 it's, it's like Jim Rohn would say, don't sign up for that class. It's a mm -hmm. freaking mystery. 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's some people that could be like, well, I could just trick them into doing this. And yeah, then it's maybe. like, oh, if they're, if they take pleasure in doing that and then just implement a little, it's like putting, you know, like medicine in your dog's bone or whatever, yeah, you yeah. know, something like that. Weird analogy, but you know, I get it. You know what it is. But like you went through the uncomfortability to get mm. to what you wanted. And yeah. nine times out of 10 people will tell you that is how you do it. Bro, listen, I used to, I used to hop in my, I, I joke about my Pontiac 2000, two tone, one tone rust, one tone dirt. This car, it started when it wanted to. You know, I used to keep changing ashtray to put gas in it. But if I heard, if I heard someone like a Robert Kiyosaki was within a 12 hour drive, I would hop in that beat up hoopty of mine and I would drive my ass there. And whether I had money to get sometimes, and I, hate this, I would sneak in sometimes because I just didn't have the, the resources or I would, I would literally would be at hotels that would have these people there. And I would be in the hallway with my ear against the door. And if there was any in, <laughs> I would find my way in these things. I'm not saying that's what you do, but that's what I was hungry. I, I, this had to happen for me. I would sleep in that car. I would wash up in the public restrooms. I wanted to be somebody so damn bad that it didn't matter. It made, it didn't matter if it was 20 degrees outside and I had to sleep in that car. It didn't matter. Um, uh, I was determined. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't know how you get it without that. And unfortunately, and I'll just tell you my industry. I just, my, my, my book that's out today, it's called MLM's right, Dirty right. Little Secrets, a look, uh, an insider's look behind the curtain. And, it, and our industry has a terrible reputation. And, and it's really because of the people. It's us. It's the distributors. It's us talking shit about someone else's company. It's about you say, oh, I just joined this, this company. And instead of me saying, oh, congratulations, welcome to the, the best industry on the planet. This is a place you can get time freedom, financial freedom. Life's going to change. If I can ever be of service, let me know. Instead of that, the goofball is going to say, oh, you know, be careful or that or that company sucks or they suck or this person. I'm like, man. And then just think if, if someone's a real professional. And they're watching all these goofballs run around this industry, putting each other down, talking shit, jumping from deal to deal. Oh, it got a little tough. So instead of me blaming what really happened, I blame the company. I blame the product. I, everything but myself. No responsibility whatsoever. And I watch people saying, oh, I'm a, I'm a leader in the industry. I'm like, bro, you never even made 100000 in a year. And you're talking to a guy who, if I wasn't doing a quarter of a million in a month, I'm, you know, I'm ready to slice, slice yeah. my wrist. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're telling me how the shit works. I'm like, and, and, I, and I watch people go three, four companies in a year. I'm like, you can never, that's never going to work anywhere. Not just in our industry, but anywhere. And anyways, don't, I get, I get a little, I get passionate about this because right. I see there's, a, and there's also like this entrepreneur supremacist type thing that like some, don't put my hustle down because you think your hustle's better. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all trying to figure out, we're all trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to make this shit happen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of egos out there, man. man. Ego. I got it. It's Look, tough. <laughs> I was one of them. Ego was the enemy. I'm a writing hand to remind me all the time, you know, cause I got in this, this profession and I had like a 15, $16,000 a month. And I was like, you know, the song, wait till I get my money. Right. You know, you can't talk to me, whatever. Well, I was that dude. Like, and, and I, thank God I had mentors. I said, you forgot where you came from. And because of that, you're going back. And I was like, oh shit, I, I, I ain't going back. Mm-hmm. And so I had a, I had to humble myself down in, uh, in real life, like 15 grand, like that should be your daily income in our, in our profession, mm -hmm. in the profession that we're in, that should be what you make a day. And, you know, we just got a lot of amateurs that are running around making our profession look like shit. Mm. And it's sad because where else could, a, where else could a person without a high school diploma with, you, you, you heard the background. Yeah. Where the doors weren't open for, I was a janitor for fucking General Electric and I hated every minute of it. This, this is a true equal opportunity opportunity. It doesn't matter. Like I always, I always say time is going to promote you or expose you. And this profession, you'll find out really quick. You're not as a big, big of a big shot as you really think you are. Oh yeah. It'll slap you in the face, man. <laughs> you could be the greatest sales peer. Like guy sitting next to me, he one time said I could sell snow to a Eskimo I'm like, bro, never say that again. <laughs> Cause never ever say that around me. Because why why would you do that? You know, and that unfortunately, but that's not how like our business, it's really like Robert Kiyosaki talks about in his book, Rich Dad. He talks about we're building a big business and the skills that it takes to do that, same skills a Fortune 500 CEO has under his belt. You're not gonna get those skills bouncing from one deal or every time it gets tough or this doesn't work or whatever. One of our snap packs exploded, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Shit happens, man. Um but we, we got to toughen up. 
And I'm, you know, I'm going to continue. I have a whole series of these books coming out. To, I always wished when I was coming up that somebody with some real credibility would come and smack some of these clowns around. And say, Only the people at the top make money. It's apparent. Like you, yeah. stupid. Excuse me. You, 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 right. you uneducated. Of course, but but yeah. prejudice comes from what? It comes from ignorance. And we have a whole whole industry. There's a whole there's Reddit groups and Facebook groups dedicated to destroying. A, a, an incredible industry that saved my life. You wouldn't have wanted me to do the alternative. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Desperate people that don't have options do desperate shit. And, and this, this profession literally saved my life. So when, when I watch clowns come in and do what they do, it bothers the hell out of me. Now being at the top now and seeing so many people come through, some people come, some people go, yeah. some people come, some people stay, right? Yeah, yeah. How early on can you tell who's real and who's not? Pretty quick, bro. I got I have automated system if and it tells me if you've watched the 30 second video. <laughs> so if you can't watch 30 seconds, um dedicate your business or if you come on board cuz what's interesting is people will come on board because they think that they have the lottery mentality because there is lottery type income. Everybody knows. Yeah. We all know someone in network marketing who's made a, making a hundred grand a month or doing millions. So that's what drives people in. But when they get in, then they don't do what that person did. I have an onboarding step on my phone, press a button, takes you through onboarding steps, take you 30 minutes to go through the whole thing. I already know if I send you the onboarding thing and you don't go through it, man, this is going to be a tough, tough walk. I, and I, I, I can't be calling you every day, please, bro. Right. If you don't want to participate in your own rescue, I got to move on. I got to go to the next person that does. Mm, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, I love our profession, man. I just, it does have a bad name, but in my book, I really, I, I break down the numbers. I show, you know, what it really is. And, and I do expose on both sides. I expose, you know, companies. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to, remember what I said earlier, you throw a rock into the crowd, whoever yells the loudest got hit. There's going to be a lot of people I think are going to um, not be happy with me, mm. which I- It's not a bad thing. No, I'm happy about that. Because I wanted to say it to him, and now I said it in a book. <laughs> That's right. So maybe I'm talking about you, maybe I'm not. But It's a lot uh, better uh, realization for a lot of people to read it and be like, oh, shit, I'm a piece of shit. I need to get my life together. <laughs> That's what happened to me. You know? you, look, I was, was reading books. At. I was reading books like, oh, my God, that's me. I was in church. And I could have swore the pastor was talking about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh man, I'm I'm terrible. I got to fix my life. No. Uh, we need that. We need that. It was uh, many years ago. I heard someone said the best way to keep information away from an American is put it in a book. So now, so again, I I said backwards is that? <laughs> yeah, think about that for a second. So you want to keep information away from someone? Put it in a book. So I'm hoping. That we get, like my book, I want it to be kind of a tool to give to the haters. Like I created the book for the for our profession. I don't call it an industry because it is a profession. And, and, and when you become a professional, the, the, the incomes are insane, the possibilities. But I want my book to be like, give it to your hating ass uncle who ain't done shit with his life, but has nothing but negative to say about it. Give it to the the, the troll. Let them read it. Because I, I show the industry. I show, I can do the comparison to real estate, traditional businesses. I, I mean- Look, the, the biggest challenge here is it, it, when you're investing under $1,000. Mm -hmm. I know you got, you don't have an incentive to really work hard. But if you go start a, any, you start a business and the average, the average small business is $40,000 to start. If you got 40 grand in and your mom lends you the money and your credit card's maxed out or you mortgage your house, you might get up early tomorrow morning. You might do, you might actually do, you might actually make some calls. You might actually do something for it. If you bought a McDonald's franchise for $2 million, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to work. You know what I mean? You're you're going to live, eat, and breathe. If your if your friend says I don't eat fast food, no, no, you don't understand. You now eat fast food because yep. I just put two million. You're my buddy. You're coming to eat this shit. Um, that's the kind of posture you'll have. But when you drop two hundred bucks, it's easy to say, "Oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. It's a pyramid. You're right." You know what I mean? Get mm -hmm. the out of There's here. There's no motivation. Dig it, what? Yeah. You have to put something on the line in order for your exactly. heart and brain to be like, oh, oh, here we go. I have to do this. I had to, I had to, for me, it had to happen. I, and I didn't have 40 grand to start a business. I didn't have that stuff. This was it. This had to happen. And then later on, even when, a after we crushed it and I had millions of dollars, I went and did it again. Be but I, I had the mindset. I tell people, now we're telling people don't treat it like a business because you don't know what the hell to do because because mm -hmm. you're not you're not an entrepreneur you're not a business person treat it like a job 
Yeah. And that's how I did it. Like I got like when I was treating it like a job, like shit, I might get fired if I don't show up in the morning. I might get fired if I don't meet my quotas. And I just I did it like that and 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 it crushed. And man. Yeah. What, now now what, people say I got lucky. What part of the country with people that you've worked with do you think is the most hardworking? Culture wise, because Scottsdale to me is like a lot of hardworking <laughs> yeah. people, a lot of egos, right? Yeah. We're like East Coast, a lot of grinders. They're tough people. L.A., same thing. A lot of work ethic, but a lot of ego and a lot of backstabbing. Like every culture has a little something different. Let me tell you this. It's every single market I've, I've been in. There's always someone there that says it can't happen. And then there's always someone there that says it can happen. I, I came up in Milwaukee and I tell our people in Milwaukee, I didn't leave Milwaukee until I was making six figures. So look, I'm saying for sure you could do six figures because I did it there. And then, and then I moved and then I went to Orange County, which opened up a whole, so there, there was a different mentality in some of these markets. Scottsdale is a hustler mentality. So you're going to find people are going to hustle a little bit more, but you can do it anywhere. When we opened up South Korea though, it, the game changed. Like the, they got up early in the morning. They worked all day, went to bed late. We did 100, our little team in South Korea did $100 million our first year there. And there was, and I would go there. Look, we, we put 30,000 people in auditorium in South Korea for an event. Like they, they were so hungry. They wanted to crush it. In, in America, I was like begging people to show up to a, an event. <laughs> like, like you'd have to pay them to come to an event to learn the skills that would set their families free. Man. It was different. It's a different mentality. Man. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we messed up and I, we didn't do it, but we pumped so much money into the system, the whole COVID thing. Yeah. People are jacked for life. Like, yep. man, they're waiting for the next zoom and you're not getting it. You're not good. What's going to happen at this event uh, this weekend is the connections are going to happen. There. Oh yeah. It's going to be, man, you're going to meet someone. All of a sudden you got, you guys are, are planning shit together. You know, the relationships are being built. There's a new energy workout partners, accountability. I mean, it's, you're not going to get that if you're sitting on a Zoom. Now, I'm not saying it now, look, because it's sold out for anyone listening. If, if they happen right. to catch it, go go at least get the information. But you don't you're not getting the rest of it. You're not getting we every Tuesday night and every Thursday night for over a decade. I showed up and set up a room. Either I was doing it in my marketplace or I was flying to someone else's marketplace to speak every Tuesday, every Thursday for over a decade. And then then in my market, I did one Saturday event a month. That would be anywhere from a thousand to four thousand people. And every single weekend, I was in another marketplace doing mm -hmm. it. And I remember being in the Midwest, man, three o'clock in the morning, driving through snowstorms. I just, I just left a meeting with two people, and and I'm on that freeway like. Oh, what? <sighs> but that's the reason why I have what I have, because I was willing to do what most people are unwilling to do. And it ain't that hard. It wasn't that hard. Like I, I can tell you this. Most of the sacrifices we're all going to deal with, like the stuff we're dealing with that seems hard right now, five years from now, you don't even remember what the hell it was. Mm -hmm. You won't, if I, if I, five years from now, I go back to you and you, you remember the big stuff, but the, the day to day stuff that we complain about and that, that keeps us from getting off our asses. You don't even know why, you know, you don't even know why, why did I procrastinate for three months? I don't know. Little things in your head that don't matter at all. Yeah, most like of it's our own head. Sleeping in your car one night, you're not going to remember that. <laughs> no. Who cares? No. Yeah, I did that too many times. But uh, yeah, plus lot, sometimes I think we're, you know, you get good at blocking out some of the pain. I think that might be part of it mm -hmm. as well. Which toughens you up. It does. It does. It, it, look, everything's about experiences, man. Have those experiences, toughen up and go out and crush it. What's the discipline of writing a book like? You've done it multiple yeah. times now, working I've, with publishers, I've done it, working with yeah. People. I've done it twice. Um, you know, it was it the one with Les Brown, the power of one, the worst book ever written. Um, uh, if you want a copy, I'll send it to you. You can use it for fire kindling. But uh, it's like Jim Rohn used to say. He says you should ha you should have growth. If you go back and look at something from twenty years ago, and you're still proud of it, you ha you probably haven't grown much. Yeah. Um, it's like the 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 high school guy who was like the king of the prom and. 20 years later, beer belly and whole thing. He's still talking about fucking prom. That's right. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. So this is the progression. This book, this book, this has been happening for about three years. And I just, you know, I went from distributor to owner of a network marketing company. And I said, you know what? Um, just watching, being on on this side and experiencing and listening to the excuses and listening to all the, the stuff. And 
I said, just time for me to put something out. Mm, that's yeah. awesome. And that dropped today. Yeah, today. Yeah, Big day morning. for you. It's a big day, Personally, man. I, I'm, professionally. I'll become a grandfather. I'm going to be a grandfather, I found out. My book is launching. We got this big event. I I, I got some some you know cool ass people around me in our community. It's a big Hell yeah! Day. And I'm here, man. I'm I know. I'm on your show, bro. Like this is this is way bigger deal for me than you. <laughs> no, I, no, this is this has been great. I mean, I love surrounding myself with people who are like you that are fired up to do yeah. a million different projects all the time. Because, like you said, you want to be that guy who's got the beer belly. I was at the gym yeah. the other day, and his father and son duo walked in. The son was wearing his varsity football letterman's jacket class of 2017 or whatever it was but the father was wearing his class of like 87 oh. letterman jacket i'm I like not that. one of those guys yes. I, unfortunately i know way too many of those guys I'm I, like, do too. I cannot be one of those guys i do too i have friends who are like oh remember back senior year i'm like no i don't no that was that was another lifetime ago for me it's all it's it's today and tomorrow the future the future should be a poll on you yeah and the challenge is for most people it's the past. For me, the future is my pole. Every day, it's like, okay, what am I going to do? Because I have goals that are out in the future. I can't be looking at this. The only time I talk about this is not again these podcasts or I get on stage and I tell my story. Otherwise, the 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 arrest, the criminal record, the all that stuff, man, it, that that is so far. It used to be when I first started telling it. Matter of fact. The, the very first time on a, bi on a big stage was at the Riviera Hotel here in Las Vegas in front of like, there was a breakout, there was like 4,000 people. And I, and I, I cried, you know, when I told the story. Um, I don't cry no more over that story. That shit's dead. Mm -hmm. that, that, the past does not have a pull on me, but the future does. And now I got a, a grandchild about to right. come in. That, that's a big ass pull. Like you put everything aside, you know, business successes, companies you've grown, relationships you've built. Being a husband, being a dad, being a granddad, like that's going to, that's your legacy. I'm willing to say, right? Hell yeah. But what is, what's the, uh, the project that you haven't accomplished yet that you can hang your hat on knowing like I accomplished that? Like, do you have like one thing that stands out above the rest for you? It's right now it's old snap. Yeah. Like I live, eat and breathe this shit. Like you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> this is, this is, this is the project. This is. Uh, because I've been in this profession for 29 years, this is the exclamation point on a 29 year career. I don't know what's after that because that's that's not where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll be snapping packs and cashing checks, and you yeah. know I'll be out here letting people know who we are, what we do, and I'm gonna keep leading, you know, from the front, leading by example. Hell yeah, John Malad. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, coming yes, in today. I won't take too much of your time. I will ramble and keep asking you questions, <laughs> but- uh, I appreciate uh, it. It's been good, man. It's been comfortable. I appreciate your entire team the here, crew. your mentors, the people yes. outside on the other side as well. He brought like a million people. <laughs> it's, yes. it's insane. Probably the most yeah. people, the most guests ever brought on. Well, you know, I, I always wanted to be a rapper, you know, but then Eminem showed up yep. and you can only have one good one white guy, rapper yeah. at a time. And now my new friend, Oops. Millie's, if you guys, if you guys check right. out Millie's, Millie, he's a, he's a powerhouse. So- you know, maybe when I'm 60, maybe that'll be my last that'll thing. That'll be the next thing yeah. that you can hang your hat Yeah, on. I'll be a rapper. I already got the entourage, so. You know, Where just, can the yeah. people find the book? Uh, Amazon. So, yeah. You find everything. Yeah, everything. Of course, days. everything is Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Go to Amazon, and it's it's uh, MLM's Dirty Little Secrets. Uh, an in, uh, Yeah, whatever it is. Insiders, look behind the curtain. Awesome. Well, you guys can find that book on Amazon. Congrats to you. Brand new granddad as well. Yes. Uh, you can follow John at John.Malot. That's M-A-L-O-T-T. -T. Good job. Got that right. Uh, episode 640 of the podcast, guys. Remember, comment, like, and subscribe on our YouTube channel at Jack O'Hara TV. Thanks so much again, John. Thank you, boss. Awesome. Was there uh, anything that you'd want to cut out of that? No. Whatever. You do what you want to do. Yeah. I appreciate it.